Hi class, this is a video um, on estimating the average rate of change um, when looking at a graph. So let's see. So they give you a kind of crazy looking graph with a bunch of goes up and down and all around and everywhere. <clears throat> <clears throat> now the I whenever I think uh, whenever somebody says average <clears throat> I automatically start thinking slope <clears throat> so Let's look at this. It based on the above graph, estimate to one decimal place the average rate of change. Okay, because rate of change. That's really the word that that invokes the word slope to me. Rate of change. Uh, so much of this for so much of that. So <clears throat> to calculate a rate of change, I need to I need to calculate the slope. And the average rate of change, the only thing I could think of to do that would be just to pick up the point that begins, this is, this is over an interval from x from one to three. So I pick a point that's that be, that's right at x equals one and then pick a point that's right at x equals three. And then I just draw a straight line between those and find the slope of that point. So here's x equals one. Well, this is the this is x equals one where where our x value is equal to one along that line. So we're on our graph on that line is right here. And I'm going to say it's probably this point. Now it's important that I actually identify what point that is. I'm going to say that is located at x equals 1 and probably y equals 2.5, I would guess. I'm estimating. Okay, and then now I also have to to three or x equals three. So here's where x equals three. And I have to look at the value that that's the height along the y axis at that point of intersection where x equals the three, um, x equals three, of course, um, that vertical line intersects our graph. And right at that line, we have three is the x value and it looks like four is the, Y value. Okay, so we have two points. And what I was saying to find the average rate of change, we have to just draw a line through those points and then we're going to find the slope of that and that will be our average rate of change. Because I mean it goes up the rate, it, rate um, it goes up right here, it's going down, decreasing and going down right here, the rate of change, and then now it's going back up. But Overall, what did it do over that entire range? It went from here to here. So it's kind of like it went up and went down. But if we took an average, it's like it, um, well, the, it did the equivalent of just going from here to here. You know, yeah, it went up and down, but it did the equivalent of, I mean, going from here to here. So we'll just, they, they call this calculating the slope between the two points that is your average rate of change. So all I have to do if I know the slope formula, it's for slope. And if we are given two points, the formula looks like this. It's y2 minus y1 all over x2 over x1. So in the numerator, I have a red point and black point and I'm just going to take the bigger point and subtract the smaller point. So I'll just call this my my nice my, my my point two, and that one my point one. However, when I'm calculating the slope, it doesn't really matter. So you could have done it opposite, and I'm we're still going to because it's a fraction and because like the way it's going to work out, it's going to work out the same way no matter what how we calculate this. But so my y two is then four y1 is the y value of the second point, which is 2.5. 2 and then all over x2, which is 3, and x1, which is 1. 
So in the numerator, I get, <clears throat> now I have to be careful we're subtracting frac decimals, right? So we have four minus 2.5. You have to make sure to line up that decimal place. So in the four, what I would do is place the decimal place right after the ones place and the zero. So now we have the same amount of decimal places and then we subtract. Because there's that, there's an error there that a lot of students make with um, not correcting that, not subtracting their decimals correctly and lining up the decimals correctly. So there's 1.5 and that makes sense. I've had to 0.5 to three and then one more to five. So 1.5 in the numerator over two in the denominator. So <clears throat> I could just divide that 1.5 divided by two. And then um, an even easier way to go about this would be to recognize that that's three and a half, three halves, or sorry, three halves is 1.5 is three halves divided by two over one, and then divide the fractions, and then I get three fourths, right? Because three halves divided by two over one, I keep flip the change, and I so I flip the second fraction, and I multiply, and I get three fourths. Okay, so. The slope there on average is three fourths. And there we go. And it says like they want you to estimate. We have to be very careful in the format that they want us to leave the answer. So we might be able to get away with leaving it at three fourths. However, um, sometimes overly being overly accurate won't hurt most of the time, but sometimes it does. They estimate to one decimal place. So they may say, because three fourths is equal to 0.75, because they own, it sounds like they may only want one decimal place. So they may be only accepting the answer that's 0 0.07, or in this case, it's better to round to 0 0.08, right? If we ran it, this five is greater, so it'd be 0 0.08. Let's see what answer they accept. They should be pretty lenient when they made this problem, but um, sometimes, depending on the person who made the problem, um, they may not do that. They may be very picky and they may want exactly 0.8 and they won't take anything else. Maybe they're not going to take three fourths because it sounds like they want a decimal answer. Okay, they took three fourths. All right, um, let's see if they would have accepted 0.8 because they probably should have, should accept 0.8. Although well, they don't say, they say estimate to one decimal place. They don't say round. Let's see if they would accept 0.8. Yeah, they would have accepted 0.8. And let's see if they accepted 0.7. So sometimes with these problems, they say, you know, oh, we'll accept the actual answer, but we'll also accept 0.1 above or 0.1 below. Any answer that's within that, that range close to the answer they'll accept. So luckily they made this problem really good. So, you know, and like I said, we estimated this, somebody else could have done the same problem and they could have said, oh, well, that looks like 2.3 and not 2.5, like I used originally. I said this point was at one and 2.5. Somebody could have said it's at one and it's, it's at one and 2.3, you know, it's been slightly off there. So they really need to when, um, when they're counting as correct or incorrect, they really need to kind of make a wider gap for the answers because um, because we this is just estimating those points. All right, well, I, I hope that you found this valuable. I hope this all makes sense. Um, have a great day, bye.